If you've used any type of 3D printer, FDM or resin, then you've probably come across stepper motors. This is a type of high precision motor that works by controlling rotation one small increment at a time instead of just sending it into a spin. This precision control is what allows 3D printers and many other computer controlled devices to be able to create such detailed objects. However, there is a dark side to stepper motors. If you push them too fast or accelerate too hard, they'll skip over some of those steps, jumping to a different position, losing all of their precision and ruining your print or other creation. But what if you could analyse these stepper motors more closely and tune their performance to ensure that you print as fast as possible, but without skipping steps? Well, that's the goal of this device, a stepper motor analyzer. So whether you want to push the very limits of your printed performance or just want to improve print quality and consistency, today I'll show you how to set up your own stepper motor analyzer. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. JLC PCB is a great place to start if you're looking for PCB prototyping and PCB assembly service. All you have to do is upload your manufacturing files, select the PCB specifications that you're after, like the color and the thickness and the type, and place the order. This stepper motor analyzer was fully manufactured and assembled by JLC PCB and delivered to my door in just a couple of weeks. Check them out via the link in the video description. Before we get started, you'll need to get your hands on one of these analyzers, and you have two options. Firstly, you can head to JLC PCB, the sponsor of the video, with the manufacturing files. The alternative option is to buy them directly from my shop at vector3d.co.uk. Fully assembled, flashed with firmware, and ready to go. The next thing you'll need is an antenna. These won't come from JLC PCB, as they don't provide separate parts, but they do come in the kit that I provide. If you're self-sourcing, look for a 2.4 GHz Bluetooth antenna with an IPEX MHF slash MHF2 connector. The next thing you need is electrical connectors. Control boards can differ in the connectors they use, but most use JSTXH and they look like this. That's what I include in the kit, and they're also utilized on the analyzer, which makes everything nice and easy. However, if you have a board from Duet, for example, then you'll need to get some KF2510 connectors to make your own adapters. For the wires, I include some short extensions for the motor and power, but if self-sourcing, some 24 gauge PVC wire should work absolutely fine. The analyzer can accept any voltage from seven to 30 volts and only draws about 0.7 to one watt of power. One thing you might need is a Bluetooth adapter. You only need Bluetooth version 4.1, which is supported by most devices at this point since it's 10 years old now, so if you have a computer that already has Bluetooth, you probably won't need to buy anything. The other thing you might need is a USB-C cable. This is only needed for flashing firmware, but just make sure that the cable provides power and data, as some are power only, so it will look like it's not connecting to the computer. The analyzer comes pre-flashed if you buy from Vector3D, but you might want a cable for any future updates and you can get this from me as an optional extra along with the Bluetooth adapter. If you ordered your analyzer directly from JLC PCB or if there's a firmware update, you'll need to flash firmware to the board. Luckily, it's really easy using a Windows PC. Firstly, download the GitHub repository to your computer so you have access to all the files. Then remove all other cables from the analyzer and connect it to a computer using the USB-C port. Check device manager on your computer and you should see a new device connected. Once that's done, simply run the flash.bat file and the analyzer will be flashed with the firmware. When it's done, unplug and it's ready to use. As it can be difficult to do later, first attach the antenna to the ESP32 module on the analyzer. It's a very small connector and can be damaged, so be sure to align it carefully before pressing it down. Next, get the analyzer connected in line with the stepper motor. It's designed to attach at the control board side, so turn off your printer and open any enclosure to get access to the control board. Unplug the stepper motor you want to analyze and connect it to one of the plugs on the analyzer. It doesn't matter which one. Then connect the other plug on the analyzer to the control board back where the stepper motor was connected. Next, connect up the power wires to the analyzer and the other end to a power supply. Your printer's power supply is recommended if it operates between seven and 30 volts. Connect red and black to the positive and negative of the power supply respectively, and plug in the JSTXH to the analyzer. Once everything is connected up, using the software is pretty simple. First, on your computer, make sure you're using a device with Bluetooth or have a Bluetooth adapter connected and enabled. 
turn on your 3D printer and the analyzer if it's powered separately. Go to the GitHub page, which will be linked below, and download the analyzer software. Run the file to launch the analyzer application. There's no installation needed. A window will show up that automatically connects to the analyzer over Bluetooth and then shows the output in the graphs. There are a total of eight graphs on the analysis application, which you can modify a little using the right-click menu options. For the three time-based graphs, we have distance, speed, and current. So distance in steps. This is the number of steps moved in either direction, updated 50 times per second. It will count up or down depending on the step of rotation. If it's counting down when you need it to be counting up, then you can use the toggle direction button to switch the direction. This will not affect the motor, just the graphs. Secondly, we have the speed in steps per second. This is the number of steps moved per second, updated 50 times per second. The faster the motor is turning, the higher the steps per second. If it rotates the other direction, it will show as negative steps per second. Again, you can use the toggle direction button if needed. Lastly, we have the current in amps. This is the amount of electrical current the motor is drawing, updated 50 times per second. This is measured as the absolute current in amps. Along the bottom left, we have three histograms. A histogram is a way of summarizing a set of data by grouping the x-axis values. First, we have the current speed graph. For each of the small speed groups, the current used at that speed is shown. This can help identify drop-off of current at high speeds. Next, we have the time speed graph. For each of the small speed groups, the amount of time spent in that group is shown. This can help identify what speed range your printer is operating at most of the time. Next, we have the distance speed graph. For each of the small speed groups, the relative distance traveled at that speed is shown. Like with speed, this can help identify what your printer is doing most of the time and help you optimize your speed and acceleration for the longest distances your printer is traveling. Along the bottom right corner, we have two oscilloscope readings. Firstly, we have a phase graph. The ring or phase graph, also known as a Lisa Zhu curve, shows the cleanliness of the current signals to the motor. If the shape decreases in size, this means that the current is lower. If the shape is kind of deformed, not a circle, maybe spiky and weird, it probably indicates that there's insufficient current delivery to the motor. If the shape is square, this indicates that you're in full steps mode and no microsteps. More microsteps will smooth out the curve. The other graph is an oscilloscope graph. These two current samples, shown out of phase, should look like perfect sine or cosine waves, but deviation from that, or rough curves, can indicate issues, such as low current at high speed. Once you've done a bit of testing, you may want to capture specific parts for further analysis, or to inspect it in greater detail, or maybe just like present it in a slideshow or something. To export, you may first want to pause using the pause button in the bottom right corner. Next, right-click anywhere in the window and select export. This will provide options of what and how you want to export. First, select the plot, aka graph, that you want to export, and you can export a single graph or all of them together. Then select the format you want. CSV is a tabulated numerical format of the data, which can open in something like a spreadsheet, like Excel or Google Sheets. Image file is a rasterized image, great for simply displaying it in a presentation or something. Matplotlib is a low level Python library for making graphs. And SVG will export an image which is useful for editing. So like maybe to add rows or highlights or something like that. This data export feature essentially turns what are some quite pretty and very interesting graphs into real tangible, useful data with precise numerical values. This makes it absolutely ideal for identifying peak values and doing some other maths or computational operations to determine exactly what's going on. So that's pretty much everything you need to know about the stepper motor analyzer. So grab one by the link in the description and start tuning your 3D printer 